Hi, everyone. Yeah. My Thank name you. is Hannah Lee, and I'm a PhD candidate at Stanford. Today, I'll be talking about my work on marketplace experiments and issues of interference, bias, and variance that arise. This is joint work with my collaborators, Gang Zhao, Ramesh Johari, and Gabriel Weintraub. So these days, platforms everywhere rely on experiments to help them make decisions. When they come up with a new idea of something to introduce, like a new feature or a new algorithm to use on the platform, they want to test the response of, the, of its participants to this new feature before they decide to launch it platform-wide. For example, a platform such as a, an online lodging platform could ask, if we show higher quality photos, do the number of bookings increase? Or here, the change that they're proposing is this the new photos, and the metric that they care about is the number of bookings. The goal then is to estimate this global treatment effect. This is the difference in that metric that you care about between a world where everyone sees this new treatment, also called a global treatment, and a world where no one sees the treatment, so the global control. You run an experiment, you'll show this uh, new feature, the new photos, to the treatment group, but not to the control group, and you compare the number of bookings between the two groups. Ideally, you want this to give you a good estimate of the global treatment effect. However, this won't necessarily be the case, especially in marketplace settings. It turns out that in many marketplace experiments, the estimates that you get from an experiment will be biased due to something called interference, which we'll talk about. And prior work has shown that the interference in these settings is large. Um, academic literature has found instances where the bias is 30 to 70 percent of the size of the actual treatment effect. Um, but if you talk to people in industry, sometimes they'll find effects where it's almost uh, 10 times as much as the treatment effect itself. And so this is a big problem for platforms running experiments. Now, let me go through an example uh, to talk about how this interference bias comes about. And what I'm going to try to get you to understand this slide is the fact that it's marketplace competition forces that are then creating interference that will then lead to biased estimates. So let's consider an example of a lodging platform where we have supply, uh, the listings here, and customers, and customers want to book these listings, book the supply. The change, of, again, that we're introducing is these higher quality photos, and we care about the number of bookings made on the platform. So in this platform, you have the customers interacting with the listings. Um, they'll be viewing the listings, uh, booking the listings. And so let's have an edge. Let's say that an edge between a customer and listing denotes the fact that a customer has viewed this listing page. The easiest or most typical types of experiments run in this case are a customer side experiment and a listing side experiment. So the customer side experiment, you'll randomize customers into treatment and control, and then depending on the treatment side, you show them something different. So here, the treatment customer would see the new photos and the control customers wouldn't. And then you just compare the number of bookings by the treatment group minus the number of bookings by the control group. And hopefully this gives you an estimate of the global treatment effect. In a two-sided market, you also have the choice to potentially randomize on the other side of the market. That is, randomize on the listing side. So here, you can assign listings into treatment control and say that treatment listings are shown with these new photos, but control listings aren't. And then you compare the number of bookings in the among the treatment listings minus the number of bookings among the control listings. So in many settings, this gives you an unbiased estimate of the global treatment effect. However, in marketplace settings, it won't. And this is due to marketplace competition effects. So notice that in a platform, if you make one listing look more attractive, you're making other listings look relatively less attractive. So by showing one listing with better photos, that listing might be stealing photos away from the other listings on the platform. On the other side of the market, if you make one customer more likely to book, this reduces the supply of listings available to the other customers. And so by showing one, by showing the treatment customer uh, a new photo, you're actually changing the behavior of the control customer. This is also known as interference in statistics literature. This violates um, classical SUFA assumptions and creates biased estimates. Now, 
platforms have realized that these biases are problematic, that biases can be very large. And so people have adopted several ways of helping to reduce the bias. The most common ones are cluster randomization and switchback testing, which change the unit of randomization in your experiment. So for example, instead of assigning individuals into treatment control, you might assign neighborhoods into treatment control or days or weeks into treatment control. These methods often increase, so these methods have the benefit of decreasing bias, but on the other hand, they also increase variance. And sometimes just due to engineering challenges, they may be difficult to implement. So this is where our work is coming in today. Today, I'll be talking about how to minimize both bias and variance and mean squared error using simple experiment design choices. That is, we're looking at how to minimize bias and variance when our only choices are whether to use customer side or realistic side experiments. And given the type of experiment, how much of the population we allocate to treatment versus control. And we show how we can use these two levers to reduce bias, variance, and mean squared error. To do that, we'll introduce a tractable bipartite model that, uh, that encapsulates these competition effects that are creating interference to begin with. Um, this market model, within this market model, we can characterize both the bias and variance of customer side and missing side experiments. And as a takeaway, we show how platforms can use these two levers, the type of experiment run and the treatment proportion, uh, to minimize the bias and variance that they get in their experiments. So I'll start by talking about the model that we use in this paper. So again, here we have, um, uh, we have a market with listings and customers, and we define a model for how the listings and customers interact. So first, we say that the first step is a consideration step where customers view some of these listings or consider some of these listings. And this step is designed to model what customers see in the search and recommendation systems to begin with. So we say that each of these customers considers a listing with some probability P. Um, in the paper, P can be heterogeneous depending on customer and listing types, but I'll uh, leave that out in this talk. Then, given the consideration sets, each customer applies to one of their listings uniformly at random. So this first customer here considered three listings and then ended up choosing applying to this listing here. In the next stage, we have the acceptance stage. So for every listing that got at least one application, they'll accept one of the applications at random. So this listing um, received two applications from the two customers and accepts the application from this one. Now what this, what this model does is it captures competition on both sides of the market. You can see that each customer can apply to at most one listing. And so there's competition between listings. And then each listing can accept at most one customer. And so there's competition between customers as well. And these two types of competition are exactly the types of competition that we said created interference effects to begin with. And so the model that we're creating here captures the relevant effects. When we're talking about interventions and experiments, we're considering interventions that change this probability, P, this consideration probability that the customers have. And then using this setup, we can quantify what happens in experiment and specifically characterize both the bias and the variance in these experiment settings and compare them with the true treatment effect. Now I'll jump to the results um, from our model. So first we show that the bias variance mean squared error in these experiments depend on which type of experiment you run and the treatment allocation. So here I'm plotting the bias for customer side and listing side experiments. And on the x-axis here, I'm changing the amount of relative demand, relative demand, so demand over supply. And what you're seeing is that when there's little demand, a customer side experiment has lower bias. And when there's a lot of demand, a listing side experiment has lower bias. We also look at what, happen, what happens when we change the treatment proportion. And so these shaded bands are showing us the amount of bias that we can have when we go from 10 to 90% of the groups in treatment. And so we see that that also has an effect 
Um, and so both the experiment type and the treatment allocation um, can affect the standard error as well as the mean squared error of your estimates. So as a takeaway, at a given level of relative demand or supply and demand imbalance, the platform can reduce these uh, quantities of bias, variance, and mean squared error by choosing the right experiment type and treatment proportion. And so now we'll jump into each of these two letters separately and talk about them in a little more detail. First, we talk about experiment type. One thing that we see is that we see this dependence on uh, which type is better, which experiment type is better with the amount of demand in the platform. And this recovers results from our earlier paper, which shows that customer side experiments are less biased when there's little demand and listing side experiments are less biased when there's a lot of demand. And there's very natural economic conditions for why this happens, uh, explanations for why this happens as well. Uh, feel free to take a look at our paper. But what this model allows us to do that we couldn't do in our previous paper, um, which used a much more complex model, is this model is tractable enough to actually allow us to characterize the variance as well. So we can uh, study the variance of these estimates. And in doing so, we can see that when we choose a type of experiment to run, the bias minimizing design corresponds with the variance minimizing design. And so there is no trade off here. By choosing the right experiment type, you can reduce both bias and variance. Now, let me talk about the second letter, which is the proportion that we allocate to treatment. So we can say like, we can put 50% of people in treatment and 50% control or 75% in treatment, 25% control, et cetera. And when we do that, we get these results here. And so on this x-axis, I'm changing the amount, the fraction of people in treatment. And again, plotting the bias of these experiments. We see that for a listing side experiment, especially, by going from 10% to 90% of uh, listings and treatment, you can reduce the bias from almost 20% to less than 10%. And we see similar patterns for customer side experiments as well, except the bias here isn't as sensitive to the choice of treatment allocation. We approve this, um, and so we prove that this is actually the case generally if the intervention isn't too heterogeneous, if there aren't too many heterogeneous treatment effects. If this is the case, then these extreme allocations lead to lower bias. That is, treatment proportions close to zero, uh, so that that is the optimal treatment allocation for bias will be close to zero or close to one. However, this actually induces a bias variance trade-off in that the variance minimizing design assigns 50% of people to treatment control, uh, roughly 50%, but the bias minimizing design assigns close to zero or close to 100% of people. And so where does this leave us for mean squared error minimization? Uh, so this is when we care about both the bias and variance. We also talk in the paper, give some guidance on how a platform can then navigate these trade-offs and navigate these two choices. So again, the two choices are experiment type and treatment proportion. For experiment type, just look at the uh, regime of relative demand that you're in and choose a bias minimizing design. This also minimizes variance. And so this choice is straightforward provided that you have a correct um, calibration to this demand parameter. With the treatment pro proportion, it becomes a little bit more complicated there is a bias variance trade-off and whether or not you should minimize bias or minimize uh, minimize variance with this with this lever depends on whether or not you're in a bias dominant regime versus a variance dominant dominant regime what i mean by that is that in small markets where you have few users you're going to have large variance on your samples on your estimates and so here you're in a case where the variance is much larger than the potential bias if you're in such a setting, then you want to choose a variance minimizing allocation, something close to 50-50. And likewise, if you're in a large market, you want to do the opposite. You want to choose a bias minimizing design. And so to sum up, in this work, we provided this analytical framework, this um, bipartite model that allows us to characterize both bias and variance in marketplace experiments. And we use this to show how we can minimize mean squared error with simple design choices. There's a lot that we could, that can be done with future work, 
you can use our model to study more complex designs and more complex estimators. Um, in particular, we talked about cluster randomization earlier, you can, of which randomizes some neighborhoods, you can consider that as, um, uh, you, you can model that within this setting by clustering on this bipartite graph, this consideration graph, and then randomizing on those clusters. You can also use this to study our uh, two-sided randomization, which we proposed in a previous paper, which is another method to help reduce bias. Um, and so to wrap up, in this work, we provide this theoretical framework that is actually very flexible and allows us to study a range of a lot of future designs as well. With that, I'll stop here and take time, uh, take some time for questions. <laughs>